The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> You think he's gone? He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. Is this some radical new therapy? You see? <laughs> well, I must have never been paying attention when you were yeah. just talking to me. Oh, we're taping. That's why. Yeah. Duh. Damn it. Now you let everyone know. Oh, it's the 4th of July. We all decided to take the week off. We recorded this last week. Don't judge him for wearing the same shirt. Right. <laughs> I actually brought an extra shirt. I'm so dumb I left it in the car. Yeah, it happens. I spent half of my time of every day going back and doing what I was supposed to do the first time. <laughs> so infuriating. I feel like I do. I'm so absent-minded, it's ridiculous. All right, I just did the same thing. I just went to check Facebook, and I'm like, oh, right. panic. Yeah, oh, that's wait, what I no, did. That's exactly right. what I did. <laughs> uh, even though you just did it, I did it as well. I've got nothing. Thanks for coming, kids. Good night. Yeah, it's the blind leading the blind today, folks. We're doing great. Tom and I are here, but we're not here, but we we're are. really here. Wait, that means I get Thursday off you next do. week. Huh? How about yeah. that? Oh, when they're watching this, it will be my day off. I'll be out doing deliveries, I'm sure. I'm going to check. Let's see if Melvin Taylor's got anything scheduled coming up. Uh, it was an epic fail on my part. No way. We did good. C- couldn't even get up there uh, to the papa bars. I got you covered. I got nothing on Melvin Taylor. Boy, his wife is so beautiful. He got lucky. He married a ginger. Oh. How did he get my life? God just mix him up at birth. <laughs> Something A what now? Ba 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 ba. Yeah, professional. All right. Still couldn't hit the high note. I have to be up for like at least an hour before my yeah. voice can do that. <laughs> this we is way too out. early. <laughs> We're taping this very early. And early for me is like one in the afternoon. I was going to say, don't, don't be fooled, folks. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. Right. But that's like that's like 8 a.m. It is. So. <laughs> it's not kidding either. you got to give him a break. All right, this song's about to end. All right, we, we never, have have we have we done that? <laughs> All right. Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan here, I think, at the Paying Attention Podcast here at High Atop. Two guys smoke shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Boy, Murphy just looks so comfortable over there. Look, it'll be so cute. Like, what's happening? My, Why is my producer, out? Chrissy, brings in her, her, uh, her dog for the show, and he's just so adorable. Just, he, just looks, he knows he, you're talking about He does. He knows what we're talking about. He's just looking at us going, hey, I'm just too busy. I'm just too too tired to get up. I know, but he's always so excited to see so you. So it is, it is uh, the week of the 4th of July, yeah. Independence Day for the United States of America. It is not just a holiday to go out and, and have barbecues, although that's part of the fun. Yeah. It's to celebrate the independence of the country. And um, we've been around for about 245 years or so, you know, give or take. And we're still here. And, you know, what's interesting, before we get into what, what the topic of the show is going to be today, uh, what's interesting is, you know, like Ronald Reagan got elected and the liberals, the Democrats, it's, it's the end of the world. The country's over. We're never going to survive this. And then Bill Clinton gets elected and the re- Republicans and the conservatives were like, it's the end of the country. The Constitution's not going to mean anything at the end of the eight years. It's, it's over. America's done. And then Bill Clinton leaves office and George Bush comes in and takes over, who's the exact opposite philosophy. And the liberals freak out. It's the end of the country. It's all over. We're all done. And then Donald Trump gets elected. And boy, did they try. Holy crap. More than any other president. Remember, he was not going to leave office. He was going to suspend the Constitution. Remember all those Remember all that bullshit lies that we got told? And it's on both sides. But with Trump, it was the worst. And it was... He's going to suspend the Constitution and use the military. We're going to be a fascist nation. He's never going to leave. He's our last president ever. 
But America did just fine through all of that. America did just fine through, through the Clintons, although they certainly caused a lot of problems. We certainly did fine through George Bush, and he certainly caused a lot of problems and put us almost into a world war. We did okay under, under Obama, whether you liked him or not. We, we survived it. We were here. And then when Obama was done, we had the exact opposite. We had Trump. So on, a, on, on Independence Day, on the week of Independence Day, I want you guys to just think about that kind of stuff for a minute and realize that, you know, impending doom is not around the corner, okay? America has survived horrible presidents and great presidents and mediocre presidents and destructive presidents and productive presidents. We have survived destructive congresses and productive congresses. There have been times when the Republicans controlled every single branch of government, and there were times when the Democrats controlled every single branch of government. And somehow, here we are. We certainly have fewer freedoms today than we did 25 years ago. But we're still here, and we still have the right to speak out against our government. We still have the right to carry a weapon for protection. We still have a right in this country to have a trial by jury. And we still have a constitution that is functioning. And I know in the last couple of weeks, we've heard a lot about Roe versus Wade being overturned, and it's the end of democracy. No, actually, if you think about it, whether you're for abortion or not, what the Supreme Court said was, it's not for us to decide, it's for the people to decide, and turned it back to the states, so each individual state can have their voters decide. That's not the end of democracy. That's good for democracy. That is democracy. So... Just remember, we're going to talk about uh, some restaurants and some stuff going on in the Valley and, and where's a good place to eat because I eat out like three or four nights a week and um, I, I'm very frustrated by some of the places that we go that are just horrible. We'll talk about some of them. Uh, but I think it's more important to talk about the, the restaurants that get it right. We've done this a couple of times. And, um, and so we're going to do that today. But, uh, you know, as you're going through your week, I know Fourth of July is over and you had your weekend already, but, you know, it's still kind of like we're still in that Fourth of July Independence Day mode. You know, just kind of think about, and, and also, by the way, your independence didn't come easy. A lot of people died to give you your independence. A lot of white people fought against slavery during the Revolutionary War to keep this country together, to stop this country from balkanizing and becoming 50 different little countries and protected the federal government, that we had, that we had veterans that went off to war and stopped Hitler and stopped the Japanese when they were really trying to take over the entire planet and really kind of came close. And there will be another world war. And when, it, and when that happens, I'm hoping that America is still free enough and still good enough to be able to fight it and win. So that's my, that's my Independence Day little rant. Get my cigarette going so we can talk about our topics. I want to thank our sponsors. We can pull them up here real quick. I want to thank McLennan Real Estate. That was pretty interesting last week. Matt McLennan came in. Yeah. And we'd been asking him like all along, you know, what, what's going on? Do you think there's going to be a housing crash? Do you think this, the bubble's going to burst? And he kept saying no. And we had him come in last week and said, you know, look, the economy's starting to tank a little bit. And Biden's screwing up. And the Congress is screwing up. And... Home prices are starting to level off. Is there going to be a burst? And he still says no. He, and I believe him because he's the expert. Um, but if you're looking to buy a house, sell a house, McLennan Real Estate Century 21, uh, McLennan and Company in, in Methuen is the place to go. AFC Urgent Care. There's another Urgent Care in the Merrimack Valley. We don't like that. We don't like that at all. Go to AFC Urgent Care. Don't go to those other fly-by-night people that just showed up. Mm-hmm. You want to go to somebody that's got a good reputation, that's got... Uh, you know, it, it's got some time in the area that understands what's going on in the Merrimack Valley. Marstain and Sun Construction, EIS, Investigation and Gun Training, Borelli's Deli. Now, I'm going to at least three cookouts on Sunday, and I'm going to Borelli's Deli to get my hot sausages because everybody, everybody that invites me to a cookout, I say, do you have hot sausage? And they always say, oh, Tom, we'll have hot sausages, no problem. And what they consider hot sausage, usually not hot sausage. I like really hot sausage. So I go to, what I do is I go to Borelli's. I get a whole bunch of sausage. And when I show up at a cookout, I bring it with me. There you go. And if anybody else wants to eat some of my hot sausage, you're welcome because I bring plenty. But at least I know that I'm going to have my hot sausage on the grill anyways. <clears throat> Tomo and Shaken Seafood. We were at Tomo's a couple of nights ago. And we're going to talk about them again when we talk about the, the restaurants. Yeah, I have to tell you, and I'm going to say it probably a couple of times during the show. 
there are very few places, because I eat out literally three or four nights a week, there are very few places where I've never had a bad experience. And Tomo's is one of them. And it's right down the street here on uh, 28. If you're looking for a place, the service is always phenomenal, whether we sit at the hibachi or in the restaurant. Service is always phenomenal, and the food is always fantastic. Uh, Clear Path for Veterans, New England, a free shout-out to Sullivan Insurance, and Lazy River Products. You know, it's the beginning of the summer. Everybody's all stressed out about Roe v. Wade. We're losing our rights and, and all the violence in America and all the political turmoil. You go to Lazy River Products. You get yourself some cannabis. You relax a little bit. Everything will look better. Every, you get a, couple, one, a couple of hits of that, and you'll be fine. And I know I keep saying I'm going to go there, but I promise, 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 Lazy River Products, we're gonna be, I'm going to be there within the next week um, to go in and say hi, take some pictures, we'll write a nice story about them. Uh, also, Pleasant Valley Landscaping, Dave Id Consoli is uh, taking on jobs. Uh, no, um, no, no, lawn, um, no lawn cutting. He's not doing any lawn cutting. He doesn't have, doesn't have the employees for that. But he does have employees for regular landca- landscaping stuff. And I also want to give a shout-out to his wife, who has not been feeling well. And I love her so much because she invited me over for a home-cooked dinner one night and made me amazing hot sausages. Oh. And you know, you know how I am with hot sausages, right? Mm. So um, I have a, a friend of mine and I go out at least two nights a week to go to dinner. I have a couple of other friends where we go out two nights a week for dinner. And I've got a couple of other friends that, like, every other week we'll go out. But I'm out at least, at least five times a week I'm eating, whether it's lunch at Salvatore's or dinner at the Loft. And um, there's a lot of places prior to COVID that were our go-to places. And COVID really did change a lot. And, and, and it's, it's, it's starting to come back. Things are starting to go back to normal. But things are by no means back to normal when it comes to dining out, for sure. I want to tell you about one bad experience I have. I normally don't like to uh, badmouth any local business because they're struggling too and they have their own problems too. However, we went to Margaritas. We were going to go to the Margaritas in Salem, uh, New Hampshire, right here on 28. Uh, but, we, but we walked in and the line, the wait was half an hour. And I said, well, you know, this, this probably, it's probably a really good restaurant, right, if the wait is a half an hour. So we left and went to the Margaritas by the loop in with Owen. Boy, what a mistake. What a mistake. We walked in. They sat us right away. It took a half an hour, a full half an hour, for a waitress to come and ask us if we just wanted drinks. And I'm waving at people, and, and, and waitresses and waiters are walking by us like we're not even in the room. And we're sitting there like we don't have anything to snack on. There's no bread on the table. There's no anything. A couple times we thought about getting up and leaving. Um, but then it was like, but then where do you go? We're going to have to go somewhere else and deal with the same bullshit. So, we, so we, we figured we'd try and stick it out. Mistake number two. We waited another 15 minutes. So it was a good 45 minutes before a waiter came to our table. And it wasn't even the waitress or the waiter. It was the manager that came to our table and realized that nobody wrote us down on their little sheet as to who, what waitress was going to get us, which is why they forgot us. So I said, okay, that's a one-off mistake. So, all right, fine. So he comes. He brings us our drinks. It's another half an hour before our waitress gets to our table. And asked us what we wanted. So we usually do what I, I, I'm a big eater, all right? You wouldn't know it by, by looking at my frame, but I eat a lot when I sit down to eat. So I usually order two or three appetizers. So we ordered the hot wings and the calamari. And we waited and we waited and we waited. And a full 45 more minutes went by. I'm playing, I'm playing Star Trek Fleet Command on my phone. My friend Bob is texting people at work and getting work done. Finally, they show up and asked uh, if they wanted to take our order. And I said, well, we're still waiting for our appetizer. She said, well, let me put the order in now so you don't have to wait so long. Great. So we put in the order. 20 minutes later, our food comes. We're still waiting for the appetizers. So I just said, screw it. So I figured, you know what? She forgot the the appetizer order. Whatever. We eat our food. By the way, the one thing I will say about Marguerite's was the food was pretty good. The food wasn't that bad. It was just that the service sucked so horrible where I have to talk about it on my show. So the food comes. It's not bad. But halfway through our food, she comes back and, and asks us if everything's okay, which took another very long period of time to take place. And I said, you know, not for anything, but we never got our, our appetizers. Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay. Well, hold on. Another 20 minutes go by. Now we're done our food. We're sitting there. She hasn't topped off our drinks at all. We've been sitting there waiting for our drinks to be retopped off. 
And at one point, I looked at Bob and said, you know what? You know how we can get their attention? Let's try to leave without paying. I guarantee you they'll follow us right to the parking lot. They'll, they'll know who we are right away. The minute They'll notice us if we start to get up and walk out, right? Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to do that. I didn't want the cops to get involved right. and all that stuff. So we waited and we waited. And she finally came back and said, um, I'm sorry. We can, I could put the order in for you, but um, the, the cook never made it. So I think she was blaming the cook for her not putting the order in. And I was like, you know what? Just that's fine. Just, you know what? It, seriously, it's just, it's fine. Just bring us the bill. We want to get the hell out of here. Yeah. Now that was bad enough, but the people who were sitting behind us were there when we walked in, and were still waiting for their food when we walked out. And and I and I and we got to the car. This was this turned into be like a two and a half hour experience to get like a fucking fajita. And so we got in the car, and I was like, you know what? I normally don't badmouth businesses. I really don't. But if they don't get their act together, that place is going to close. There's, n- there's no way that place can survive. And as a customer who used to kind of like to go there before COVID, um, I'm not coming back. I'm just not. The other place that I said I would not go back to was Miller's Tavern, which is right across the street from The Loop. Um, after COVID, they still don't have Irish nachos. Their answer is, uh, we don't have Irish nachos because of the supply chain issue. So we leave Miller's Tavern, and we go to the Irish Cottage, and we order Irish nachos, and wouldn't you know it, full supply. I was going to say, I had them there on Tuesday night. Right, so full supply at the Irish Cottage, but Miller's Tavern somehow can't get it because of a supply chain issue. I'm sorry, that's just not... This is just not acceptable. Supply chain issue of what? Potatoes? Right, right yeah, <laughs> like, like, really. I saw them at Market Basket. So, like, we, so we stopped going to Miller's Tavern. There's a girl there that we really like, Courtney. She's really nice. and she, I, I guess she's now the manager now. She made it through COVID, so they made it made to the manager. So my friend Octavian on Sunday said, hey, look, we're all having drinks at Miller's Tavern. Why don't you come by? Uh, he's the uh, uh, chief of staff for uh, Mayor Brian DePena. So I said, oh, good. I, I got some stuff I need to get in front of the mayor. I'll go and we'll have a couple of drinks, and we'll talk about these things. Went in, and the food was good, and the service was good, but they still don't have Irish nachos. And so, like, I'm not going to say don't go to Miller's Tavern because they have improved since COVID. They've improved significantly since COVID. Right after COVID, it was a nightmare. They didn't even have hot wings. They were trying to tell me the supply chain issue was about hot wings, on hot wings. And, like, you can go, like, literally across the parking lot to TGI Fridays to get all the hot wings you want. But I'm going to say about Miller's Tavern, they have stepped up their game. As we've come out of the COVID situation – they, the, the menu items have expanded. The service has gotten a lot better. Um, the drinks are a lot better. They're a little stronger than they were during COVID. I know they were watering everything down. Um, so I'm gonna, as far as Miller's Tavern goes in Methuen, I would say if you go in there, for, you just, just don't have your hot set on Irish nachos when you go. But otherwise, they have like the regular nachos and, and everything else there is, is generally pretty good. Um, one of our favorite types of food, I'm going to go through a bunch of them. One of our favorite types of food is Mexican. Now, there are a lot of really horrible Mexican places in the Merrimack Valley. We've been to every single one of them. Uh, But there are some really good Mexican places in the Merrimack Valley. Uh, Margaritas don't bother, right? But uh, if you're looking for really good Mexican, we found, I think, the best Mexican place in the Merrimack Valley. We actually found it on Tuesday this week. Uh, We went to Casablanca in North Andover and... They went open because there was some kind of a water main break on 125, so everything on that stretch was closed. So I said, screw it. You know, I think there's a Casablanca in Haverhill. Let's, let's try that. We've never been there. Let's give it a shot. It's probably the same family, so the food's probably good. So we went. Um, it's right in downtown Haverhill. It's right across from the old post office. It's actually right next to Sparky's. And by the way, as a side note, if you like hot wings, Literally, there is no place in the country better than Sparky's in Haverhill. They've got over 100 different types of hot wings, and some of them sound really gross. But we went in one day, and I looked on the menu, and literally there's 100 different types of hot wings. And I saw peanut butter and jelly hot wings. And I said, there's no way that can be good. I want to try that. That's got to be horrible. But I want to try it. It was so friggin' good, I ordered two orders to go when we left. It was so amazingly good that we ordered, like, to, to go. At, we were full. We were like, we're going to take some of this home. So we ordered more, and we took it home. Right next door to that, or two doors down from that, is Casablanca in Haverhill. The food, way better than North Andover, way better than, forgive me, tequilas in Methuen, 
which does have pretty decent uh, Mexican food. Um, and the uh, the place on uh, Common Street in Lawrence, I think it was called Cafe Azteca. I think they're closed now. But everybody used to rave about that place, and I hated it. it there was nothing spicy about any of the food, and I'm a spicy guy. Um, so we went into um, Casablanca, and um, I asked the lady, I said, are you related to, are you affiliated with the other Casablanca? She said, same family, different recipe. Service, phenomenal. Um, food, above and beyond any Mexican place that we've been to. It was much, the shrimp was much bigger. The shrimp was much more fresh. The steak was much more fresh. When I asked them to please burn the onions and the peppers in the bottom when you bring out the skillet, can, you, can it be burned, please? Can you overcook the shrimp, overcook the vegetables, and overcook the steak? I do the steak and shrimp fajitas, like my, my go-to thing. It, it was so good. I, again, ordered another one and took it home. It's actually sitting in my fridge. I'm going to eat it when I leave, when I get back from Borelli's today. So when we left, I asked the lady, you know, if um, if they were, like, open late at night. Like, I wanted to know, like, what their hours were so we could go back. And apparently they are open till like, about 9 o'clock at night, sometimes 10, depending on what they think. Like, Friday and Saturday, they're open till 10. So if you're looking for really, really good Mexican food, really good Mexican food, it's Casablanca and Haverhill. That's the, that's the place to go. Um, let's see. We talked about margaritas. We talked about Casa, both Casablanca's. Um, Italian food. I'm not really a much of an Italian food. Um, I ate Italian food as a kid growing up. My aunt and uncle raised me. My uncle's Italian. Everything was pasta. Every, every night there was pasta with something. And I just kind of got sick of Italian food, quite frankly. I mean, my mother's the best cook in the world, but you can only eat so much Italian food. So I'm not much of an Italian food guy, but there are two places in the Merrimack Valley where you can get really superior Italian food Um, the first is Salvatore's in Lawrence. I'm not just saying that because they advertise, because I'll tell you what, there are a lot of food places that advertise in the Valley Patriot. I don't eat there. So if you see me eating somewhere that advertises with us, you know, the food is good because I'm Mr. Eating Out and that's what I do. Um, Salvatore's, the prices are a little high for me, but the food is so good and the service is so good and the drinks are better than most places that it's, it's, it's really worth going. I, I think it's worth going, and I can tell you some of the best things on their menu, the, um, the uh, butternut squ- squash ravioli is amazing. The um, veal salta boca is really good, and the veal masala is just, it's a, it is just amazing. I also, not being much of a pasta guy, um, saw an item on the, on the menu that said linguine and clams. And I said, well, linguine, it's a big plate of linguine, and I'm not really much of a pasta guy. <coughs> Excuse me. But the guy sitting next to me ordered it before I had a chance to order, and I watched it come out, and I looked, and I said, you know what? That actually does look really good. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it because they didn't give you, like, five clams and a big bowl of ziti, a big bowl, bowl of, uh, of uh, um, linguine. linguine. It was an entire bowl of clams and an entire bowl of linguine, and then they let you mix it. They let you, they let you do it with some kind of garlic sauce on it. It's just, it was just so good. It was crazy. Um, so Salvatore's is great. If you go to the Chateau in Andover, they've got – it's a different kind of Italian food. If you go to Salvatore's, it's gourmet Italian food. If you go to the Chateau, it's kind of like regular Italian food. And you want to get like the, the toasted ravioli, the, um, the chicken palm is really good. And the, and the lasagna is actually really good. They have hot sausages inside their lasagna. Okay. So that, that was actually the thing that made me want to go back. Proper hot so, sausage. So again, it, most people, when they say, hey, let's go out to dinner, and they suggest an Italian place, I usually just say no, because I'm not really, I have to kind of be in the mood for it. But, um, but the Chateau and Salvatore, Chateau and Andover, Salvatore's on Merrimack Street and Lawrence, phenomenal. Now, here's another, here's another type of food. By the way, I lived in Alabama for a year. I just want to veer off for a minute. I lived in Alabama for, le- for a year. I lived in a place called Opelika, Alabama, right outside Auburn University, in the Stonehenge Mobile Home Trailer Park. By the way, most fun year of my life. But one of the things that was frustrating living down there is they didn't have a variety of food like we have in the Merrimack Valley. There was one restaurant called Tiger Times. I'm sorry, there was one breakfast place called Tiger Times, and it was just a diner. And there was one restaurant called Touchdowns, and it was basically kind of like the 99 with a lot of screens. It was like a sports bar. 
And there was one Domino's and there was one McDonald's in a 10-mile radius. So you didn't have Chinese food. You didn't have Lebanese food. You didn't have Italian food. You didn't, you didn't have um, uh, Thai food. You didn't have, there was no variety at all. And I, I, I talked to a lot of people down there, and, and it, apparently that's kind of standard, unless you're in a big city down south, that really as far as, almost like you're in Louisiana, they've got all that Cajun stuff, that a lot of places around the country don't have the variety that we have in the Merrimack Valley. When I came back, the first thing that I did was I went to Shadi's in Methuen for Lebanese food. Now, Shadi's burned down in Methuen. They've reopened in North Andover. Lebanese food, if you're a Lebanese food guy, Shadi's is the... Is the it used to be Satane in Methuen, but they closed. Now it's Shadi's in North Andover on 125. The Asmar family have owned it forever. They're great people. They have their own recipe. If you like hummus, amazing hummus. Uh, I usually get the... Um, I usually get the kibbe salad sandwich, which is fantastic. And every once in a while, I get the shawarma. It doesn't agree with me. But every once in a while, I get the shawarma if I'm feeling good. And the shawarma is, is really excellent. I don't know of any other Lebanese place anywhere in the valley that even comes close to Shadi's. When we go, we spend a lot of money, we eat a lot of food, and we take a lot home with us. And by the way, it's, it's, um, it's a good place to bring a date. A couple of times I brought dates to shoddies because first of all i'm the youngest person in the place by about 35 years right <laughs> okay and it's not very you, you don't have to worry about really loud music like drowning you out while you're trying to talk and there's always plenty of parking so sh- if you like lebanese food shoddies is the place to go the, i'm not much of a greek food guy but i have a friend who owns a greek place in lowell called athenian corner teddy panos um I know him from my days working at WCAP, and I was never. And he's always promoting it because it's his restaurant, and he used. He, I think he still does the morning show there, um, and I would like do my show on a Saturday from twelve to two, and then I go over there and I like just have a quick lunch. The food is amazing. The food is really good. It's a lot like Lebanese food, uh, but it's different. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Um, they've got hummus, but it's a different kind of hummus. Yep. They use different stuff. They've got kibbe, but it's a different kind of kibbe. Uh, but it's really good. And the best part about Athenian Corner, prices are the lowest of anywhere that anywhere in that in that area. There's a whole bunch of restaurants in that downtown Lowell area, and Athenian Corner, the prices were a lot lower than what we expected them to be. Sushi. I'm a big sushi guy. There was a place in Lawrence called Anaka. I was there four days a week. Now I go to a bunch of different places because Anaka has closed. I'm still very sad. I'm still very, very sad because no matter where I travel in the country, I get sushi. When I go to Washington, D.C., there's a great place near uh, E Street, and I can't remember the name of it, but it'll come to me. They have really good sushi, but it was nothing like Anaka. Okay. When I go to New York City, there's a couple places on 52nd Street. Great sushi, but not even close to Anaka. Then Anaka closed. So we went on a, on a, um, a mission one night to try and find good sushi. We went to a place on Merrimack Street in Methuen. I'm not going to mention the name. It was horrible. Service was good. It, Chinese food, they, they serve Chinese food and sushi. Chinese food was okay. But really, isn't all Chinese food just okay? Like every single Chinese food place you go anywhere in the country, it's the same menu. It's the exact same menu. Yeah. Chicken wings, rice, um, spare right ribs. Here. Egg rolls, yeah. it's, it's the same. Peking ravioli, mushu gai pan, it's all the same. But um, the place in Methuen, the, uh, the Chinese food was good. Sushi was not that good. There's also a new sushi place on 114 in North Andover near the Staples Plaza. The sushi was not only not good, I'm going to say it was kind of horrible. And the service wasn't that great either. But we did find one place that has great sushi. And that is, believe it or not, Tomo's down the street. Uh And again, I'm not saying that because they advertise, because I wouldn't eat there. I would just take their money and put it in the paper, and I wouldn't wouldn't go. But if you're not going to sit down at the hibachi at Tomo's, and you're going to go to the restaurant side, which we do a couple times at least once a week, the the sushi is amazing. And my recommendation, get the kamikaze and order two. Because you're going to take that first bite, and you're going to look down and say, that's not enough. I need way more than that. So I ordered two kamikazes and a little bit of uh, a little bit of rice. 
uh, and I asked them for the uh, the hibachi rice. I don't like the white rice, and it's, I mean you get white rice from you know Uncle Ben's at at Market Basket. I want like I want Tomo rice. So um, we went the first time we went uh, to the restaurant side. I said, like, give me, like, uh, one of each. I picked, like, five different sushis, and we tried a bunch of different ones. And the kamikaze was great. But there's a couple of others that are pretty good, too. Um, there's a, and I can't remember what, the, what they call it, but it's a scallop wrap with some kind of a jalapeno on top of it, which is just, like, it's crazy good. Oh. It's, like, one of those things, that, like, you taste it and go, I've never had anything like this. Right. Give me more. Um, so, uh, so that's uh, Tomo. Uh, it, it really is funny, though, when you think about the Chinese food. Like, you go to Washington, you go to Florida, you go to New York. Chinese food is just Chinese food. Some of it's more fresh than other places, but it's all really kind of the same menu, and the quality of Chinese food really doesn't change. There are places that are really bad. Um, there's a, a place called Golden Something in Boston that we went to that was, the Chinese food was just horrible. You could tell it was either recooked or it was left out for too long or something. But most Chinese food places, it's just Chinese food. Like, you get, you get what you get. Yeah. And it's, it's not – most places aren't better or worse than any other Chinese food place. But if you like Thai food, uh, there's a place in Andover that has pretty decent Thai food. It's okay. But there's a tiny little place on 125 in North Andover across from forget a farms it, and when I say tiny, it's like one-tenth the size of the room that we're in. It's like, take your bedroom and cut it in half. That's how small this wow. place is. Um, and I, I hadn't had Thai food in a long time. The last time I did, I think it was called Jasmine's in, in Andover, but they may have changed their name. So we went in, and I just randomly picked three things on the menu. And it was so good. And I was with my friend Christine. It was so good. We ended up talking politics and stuff. We were there for about two hours. We ended up getting hungry again and ordering more food. We ended up there almost three hours. The, the, the drinks were good. The drinks were strong. I'm not much of an alcohol drinker, but I was drinking alcohol that day because um, it was kind of a date. Not really, but it was kind of a date. It was, it was like, can we make this a date or not? It was one of those, <laughs> it was one of those we're friends, but maybe this could work kind of thing. Um, and so we were there for a long time, and the drinks were strong. And the appetizers were good. The only thing that I would say, like, that I, if you had to give them a negative uh, grade on anything was the portions were kind of small, oh. which meant you had to order more food, which means they made more money. So it's smart on their part. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big eater. Like, when I eat, I eat a lot because it's usually my only meal of the day. Right. I don't eat three meals a day. I get up at, like, 12 in the afternoon. I make coffee, and the first time I'm thinking about food is around 5. Um, and that's usually when we go out. That's usually when I'll, I'll text somebody and say, hey, you just get out of work. It's great for me because my breakfast is when everybody's getting out of work. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll text one of my friends, Bob or Christine or Nancy, you know, hey, you hungry? You want to go to Salvatore's? You want to you go to Casablanca, wherever you want to go? Um, so we, we go into the Thai place, um, phenomenal food, phenomenal service. It would be nice if they had high, bigger portions. But, you know, overall, overall, Really, really good food. Um, it would be it would be nice if there was more room. Yeah. Like because you're really like you're sitting on top of people while you're eating, and everybody can hear everybody's conversation. So you really can't you really can't have like a pr like if you go in there to like discuss work or politics, you really don't want to yeah. go to what, what it's called lots of eats in North Andover. Now there's a couple of American food places that have just like everything, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you've got the 99, they're okay. You've got TGI Fridays, they're okay. The chains are okay because they're chains. But there is one place that I used to go to a lot when I was younger. Forgot about it through most of my life because it's not within the area that I'm usually driving in. But about two years ago, my friend Nancy said, you know what would be a great place to have dinner? I haven't been there for 20 years. Let's try Kitties in Reading. Now, what's interesting about Kitty's is Kitty's used to have a sister restaurant in Lawrence called Jilly's. And that was my very first job when I was 14 years old. It was on, it was on uh, Mass, Mass Ave huh. on the Lawrence North End of a line. And I washed dishes under the table at 14 years old for two summers. The same family owned Kitty's, which has been around since longer than I've been born. And most of the people who worked there, the waitresses, have been working there since long before I was born. Uh. So we went to Kitty's and the, wait, the waitress knew every single menu item off the top of her head. Wow. Every single one. 
So I randomly, I was, I was testing, right? I randomly picked something on the menu and said, hey, what comes with that? And then I looked to see if she was right. She got everything right. Because most of the people who work there, because it's a family business, are friends with the family and they've been there forever. Yeah. So they know their stuff. We didn't wait extra long for the food or the drinks, and the food and the drinks were great. The appetizers were so big that we barely had room for our meal. And then our meal came, and it was literally double the portion you would get anywhere else. So once we went and we got the steak, the steak was literally double the size for the same price as anywhere else. Wow. Um, we've gone and we've got the hot wings, by the way. I'm a big hot wing guy. You're never going to get hot wings better than Sparky's in Haverhill ever because they've got, as I said, 100 different varieties. But as far as restaurants go, you want to go to Kitty's if you want hot wings. They have these atomic wings that are so hot that before you even bite into it, your head is sweating. Like your body, <laughs> your body is already looking to make room for that. Now my mouth is watering just talking about it. So we went to, uh, so we went to Kitty's. We end up going, we've gone back now about four or five times. And the, the other really good thing, great parking, have no problem parking. And even the time that we went in where they told us it was going to be a half an hour wait, the turnover is so fast that it was really turned out to be like a 10-minute wait. And then once we sat down, it was boom, boom, boom. They got us our drinks right away. Now, we, I've gone to places like TGI Fridays or other places where it's really busy. And then when they sit you at your seat, it takes a while for them to come to, because they're busy. Yeah. Not at Kitties. Not at Kitties. That place was packed to the rafters, and they were on top of us. Every, every couple of minutes, do you need us to top off your drink? Is everything okay? Do you need more napkins, Mr. Duggan? It was fantastic. It was fantastic. So there's a whole bunch of places in the Merrimack Valley that are really mailing it in. Mm -hmm. and, and the only one I mentioned by name today was that was the one that I mentioned margaritas because I, I really am not into shaming businesses. I'm hoping that those, those businesses that we used to go to will get their act together. There is one other place that serves American food that we never liked before COVID. We tried it after COVID and it was great. And then all of a sudden, within a couple of months of the country opening up again, they started dropping off menu items. And they claimed it was supply chain issues, which I don't buy. Okay, I just don't buy that anymore. But the food is good and the service is good. The parking was good. And they had you in and out. And that's the loft on 125 in North Andover. It's right next to Joe Fish, where we used to go. Uh, unfortunately, and they're owned by the same family, so I'm, I'm, it's, it's kind of a double hand. It's, it's a slap on one hand and a congratulations on the other. Uh, Joe Fish, the portions are much smaller. This, I used to go to Joe Fish for the deep sea scallops. They don't have deep sea scallops anymore. What they're calling deep sea scallops are really baby scallops, and they're not really that good. If you really want seafood, is that right? Do we have two minutes left? Yeah. If you, if, if you really want really good seafood, you need to leave the Merrimack Valley. I hate to say that, but you do. You can go to Markey's in Hampton. It's like on the Hampton Seabrook Line. You can go to Brown's on the Seabrook line, or you can go to, I think, probably the best seafood that I've ever had. It's Starboard Galley in Newburyport. Oh. Now, the problem with Starboard, the only problem with Starboard Galley is that it's impossible to find parking because it's right in that, in that very busy area of downtown Newburyport, and it's, it's just very difficult to find parking. And I can't really walk that good sometimes. Mm. So when I'm driving around, I'm looking for, a, like, if they've got parking near the door, I'm going to go. If they're not, I'm going to look for another place. And as good as the food is, if I can't find parking, I'm not walking a block. It's going to take me an hour. So I, I will go somewhere else. Um, there's there's a, one other place up at the beach, the Hungry Traveler. But I understand that they've just been bought. Oh. They, they've just been bought by new owners. So I'm not going to review them because I don't want – if I give them a negative review, it's not fair to the new people. And if I give them a good review and the new people suck, you guys are going to be mad at me if you go. <laughs> So I'm going to wait. We're going to wait through the summer. We're going to see what the new people there do. Um, but I think I've given you guys some, some really good insights as to if you're going to eat out, some really good places to go. And by the way, if you do, send me an email. Let me know what you think about any of the suggestions that we gave you on this. Uh, because, uh, and by the way, if you have a restaurant that you want me to try, I will try it. There's a sushi place on Merrimack Street that I already talked about that I didn't really like. It's a Chinese food place. Um, it was recommended by two of my friends. And we went. We gave them a chance, and it was horrible. 
And then we went again. We gave him maybe a second shot because I'm always like, everybody can screw up once. Right. We give everybody two chances. We gave them three chances. Oh. And the sushi was just not good. It just wasn't good. Um, and I don't know if it was the freshness. I don't know if they just didn't put enough into the sushi. But I just, I just didn't really like it. Um, so Mexican, you've got Casablanca and Haverhill. Uh, Italian, you've got Sh- Sh- Salvatore's in Lawrence and the Chateau. American food, you got Kitties and sometimes the Loft, uh, depending. Um, well, Greek food, Athenian Corner in Lowell. Sushi, Tomo's right down the street. Really, you can't go wrong with Tomo's. Honestly, if you're looking for sushi, if you're looking for hibachi, you're looking for Chinese food, you got to go to Tomo's. Yeah. Um, where else? Uh, we did see, Oh, and lots of eats if you like Thai food. So I guess that's it. I guess that's it for our restaurant review show. I hope you guys enjoyed your 4th of July weekend. If you didn't invite me to your barbecue, shame on you. He would have brought hot sausages. I would have brought my hot sausages <laughs> if you invited me. Yeah. I used, to get in, I used to get invited to a lot, and then I wouldn't go, so people started inviting me. But it was like, I still want to get invited, yeah. because I couldn't go this year, but next year I might, I might not be busy, so I might, I might want to go. So shame on you if you didn't invite us. You're, yeah, shame on you if you didn't invite me to your barbecue. How dare you. I'm a big fan of barbecues, and I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, fire pits. Ah. If you got a bunch of friends, and you, you all know me, and you like me, and you're sitting around a fire pit some night, shoot me a text or a phone call. I'd be happy to come have a drink with you in a fire pit. I love that stuff. Actually, Stephanie Infante, the new city councilor in Lawrence, invited me to Fire Pit. There you go. I think next, I think it's next weekend or the weekend after that. Awesome. But I love Fire Pits in the summertime, especially yeah. if you're near the beach. That's awesome. Melvin Taylor says you got to go home. Hope I hope I made you hungry. I'm starving. I used to. Yeah, I'm hungry now too. Melvin Taylor says you got to go home, so go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.